In this video, I'm going to introduce you to sensitivity analysis, and then I'm going to give you a very simple example of how it can be used in valuation work. Sensitivity analysis allows investors, analysts, and management to analyze the sensitivity of a valuation or an intrinsic value to a single input. And there's two primary reasons why we'd want to use sensitivity analysis. First, it indicates how sensitive our model is, or rather our intrinsic value, which is calculated using the model is, to certain drivers of value. For example, the sales growth rate, or the weighted average cost of capital, or the long-term growth rate. It can also be used to indicate possible upper and lower bounds of our intrinsic value. So for example, if we don't believe that the weighted average cost of capital will be greater than 10%, we can build that into our sensitivity analysis by not examining the weighted average cost of capital above 10%. However, there are some problems with sensitivity analysis. First, you have to choose the inputs for the analysis yourself. So if you have a model with 20 different inputs that could be random variables, the downside here is you have to individually select the inputs for each variable yourself. I'll show you that in a few seconds. Second, Variables don't change in a vacuum. The weighted average cost of capital is not going to increase or decrease with every other variable in your model remaining static. Oftentimes you have a case where when one variable moves, many other variables are going to move, which is why we want to use scenario analysis. And then finally, the range of your sensitivity analysis could be fairly limited. For example, if you're building a chart to document the sensitivity of the intrinsic value to let's say the long-term growth rate, you might only have five or six different possible growth rates. And if the actual long-term growth rate is outside of those five or six different growth rates, you're not gonna get an accurate valuation, or at least you won't have accounted for the large or very small long-term growth rate. Now let's take a look at an example of how we can use sensitivity analysis in valuation work. And I wanted to show you something in Excel because there is a fairly good function that Excel offers that allows you to build out a table for sensitivity analysis. Okay, so here I have a simple two-stage DCF model. We have our inputs up here, and these are our inputs that I've entered in. We have our historical values over here, and we have our pro forma values or forecasted values here. And then down here, I am calculating our free cash flows to the firm and our free cash flows to equity. And in this model, we really have three models here. I'm estimating the value of our terminal value cash flows using the constant growth model or the constant growth dividend or discounted cash flows model. Uh, here we have our free cash flows where I'm using market multiples approach to calculate all the entire value of our terminal value cash flows. And then finally, I have our FCFEs, our free cash flows to equity here. And down here, I'm using the NPV formula to calculate our intrinsic value. So we subtract out the debt, add the cash, divide by shares outstanding, there you go. And that $58.49 I've linked here. So if we wanted to use sensitivity analysis on this model, the best way that you could do this, or the way that I certainly would recommend, is by building a data table. So over here, I will build that table. And I'll start out by putting in the variable or variables that I want to examine, or rather, we need one or two variables that we can test the sensitivity of. So as one of those variables or both of those variables adjust, we're going to look at how the intrinsic value adjusts. So let's do the weighted average cost of capital and the long-term growth rate, G. So I'll just put in the WAC and we'll do long-term growth rate. And then we'll identify some values that our weighted average cost of capital could take. Let's say 6%, 7%, and make sure that you have all these listed as percentages because that makes it easier to observe or examine. So we'll just identify some weighted average costs of capital. 
and then we'll identify some long-term growth rates. And I'll just enter, make those percentages. So zero, one, two, three, four. And now what I can do to create a data table where we're estimating the intrinsic value, which is what we're gonna get in these cells, I need to link in the intrinsic value right here in this cell. So I'll set that equal to our intrinsic value right here. And then I'm going to highlight this entire range. So from the, the actual linked value all the way over here, and this will be our table. Now to get our intrinsic value, what I can do is I can go up to the data tab and I can go up to what if analysis and go down to data table. And my row input cell is just going to be the cell or rather the, the range that we have for zero to 4%. That's our long-term growth rate. And that's right here. I've assumed it is 2% in the model. And in this sensitivity analysis, I'm going to let that adjust. Column input cell is our weighted average cost of capital. And I'm just identifying that that input is right here. And so when I click OK, out come a series of intrinsic values that allow us to determine, well, if our weighted average cost of capital was 6% and our long-term growth rate was $0, our intrinsic value based on the free cash flow to the firm model, the, the first model that I have in this analysis would be $67.02. And our intrinsic values adjust based on our long-term growth rate and our weighted average cost of capital. So there we go. All right, so let's do a summary of what I just covered. First, sensitivity analysis is very good at examining the impact of one variable or two variables at a time. Second, the drawback to sensitivity analysis is that it relies upon the accuracy of your model and it also relies on the possibility that the inputs in your model will take the values that you've set in your sensitivity analysis. And then finally, if you wanna perform sensitivity analysis, my best recommendation is to use Excel's data table function. There are other functions out there, but Excel's data table function is something that almost everyone has available to them, and it just is quite simple. So with that, I'm going to wrap up, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or call me. Thank you.